RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Next Saturday, the University of Southern California plays UCLA in their big traditional football game. The whole thing was almost canceled out, thanks to Phil and Frankie. But more about this later. Now a word from RCA Victor. The years RCA has spent developing the field of electronics, the untold millions of dollars RCA has spent in research, have resulted in the discovery of a completely new circuit system for television home receivers. This new circuit system with an electronic supercharger now brings you television with picture power. And now, RCA Victor is the first to bring you 21-inch supersets with picture power. There's the RCA Victor Suffolk, the Clarendon, Donnelly, and Rockingham, for example. Four magnificently styled 21-inch supersets. And each brings in the sharpest, most detailed big pictures you've ever seen. There's virtually no interference in any television area city or country, thanks to picture power. They're superb, one and all. See them for yourself. And remember, when you buy RCA Victor television, ask about the RCA Victor factory service contract. When you buy RCA Victor television with RCA factory service, you get television's greatest combination, offered by RCA Victor, cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations. the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Bill Harris. <laughs> For the past few weeks, Alice has noticed that Phil has been very preoccupied. Lately, it has gotten to the point where he doesn't seem to know what's going on around him. He's in a daze, absent-minded, and being a little concerned, Alice has decided to talk to him about it. Phil? Phil? Phil! Phyllis, will you answer the phone? How can you stand that shrill ringing? <laughs> Daddy, it's Mother calling. Well, bring the phone over here. I'll talk to her. Oh, Phil, I'm right here, and I want to talk with you. I haven't got time now, miss. My wife's on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, I'm your wife. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Hiya, Sophie. <laughs> Oh, Phil, what's wrong with you? He's gone nuts. <laughs> that miniature brain has finally snapped. <laughs> I told you the day you married him, you Alice. Keep you keep out of this, Willie. I'm sorry, Alice. It's just... Well, it's just that I got something on my mind. Well, Phil, what's bothering you? I don't you? know. I don't know. I'm... I'm dissatisfied lately. I'm not happy with my radio show. Well, you're not the only one, Philip. <laughs> Sponsors unhappy with it. NBC's unhappy with it. The public's unhappy with it. I, I all think... right, all right. Now leave me alone, will you? Yes, Uncle Willie. You stop picking on our daddy. He's just nervous because he's overworked. That's telling him, Alice. After all, there aren't very many men who work as hard for a half hour every week as Daddy does. <laughs> yeah, do you think it's pleasant for him to have to come down to the studio every Sunday afternoon when he could be out playing polo? <laughs> polo? Oh, honey, that's a typographical error. It's supposed to be pool. Leave it like it. <laughs> Why don't you like our radio show? Oh, honey, don't say that. I like it. I love it. But it's just that I miss the thrill and excitement of playing to a large theater full of people, like I used to do when I was in vaudeville. What's vaudeville, Daddy? Vaudeville, my child, was a form of entertainment that they say was killed by a lot of corny acts that nobody will ever see again unless they have a television set. <laughs> oh, gee, that reminds me. It's time for the Continental. Come on, Phyllis. Let's go in and watch it on our new RCA Victor 17-inch picture power television set. <laughs> yes! The set that brings in a good picture even if you live in a fringe area. 
This is made possible by the electronic genius of the RCA engineers. Thank you and bless your commercial little heart. <laughs> I, I never knew you were in vaudeville, Philip. Never knew? Are you kidding? I've been in the show business since I was a baby. My mother was in it before me. My grandmother was... Look, I don't want to brag, but Grandma was the first Indian girl to appear in burlesque. <laughs> <laughs> Mamusa was the original Cherokee strip. <laughs> How'd you like that one, Willie? Cherokee strip. <laughs> oh, Philip, you are a wit. <laughs> Think so? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have a way of taking an old joke and making it sound just like an old joke. <laughs> Restless feeling is just the stage you're going now, through. Now, wait a minute. No, it isn't, because I was talking to Frankie the other day, and he thinks I ought to get back in front of the public, too. Said I can make a lot of money on personal appearances, and he's right, because... Come in. After all, honey, I'm a big name. I'm in demand. I could Hiya, go... Hiya, Curly. Hiya. Re... What's the matter with you? You look tired. I am. I'm exhausted. On the way over, I picked up four college girls, gave them a lift. <laughs> Well, why should that tire you out? I haven't got a car. <laughs> it ain't easy carrying those names piggyback. Wait a minute. That's <laughs> Frankie. Frankie, where did you ever meet college girls? On the campus at the University of Southern California. Oh, now, what were you doing at the university? Oh, Alice, haven't you heard? He's majoring in French. He wants to be able to read the labels on cognac bottles. <laughs> Please, Curly. No levity or I won't tell you what I was doing out there. I won't tell you the good news. Good news? What good news? You've been wanting to earn some money making personal appearances, so I talked to the dean at the university and got you a job. No kidding. What kind of a job? You're going to do a benefit at a football rally. Benefit? <laughs> Wait a minute. I ain't working for nothing. You better take it, Curly. You're not much in demand. I had a tough time selling you at that price. <laughs> I think they got a lot of nerve. That's what I... Oh, Phil, you should feel flattered they asked for you. They didn't exactly ask for him. They wanted you, Alice, and I told them you wouldn't appear any place without your straight man. <laughs> oh, they wanted me, huh? Uh, well, when is this football rally, Frankie? It's tonight. Oh, what's the rally for? It's for the USC-UCLA game. Stop spelling things out in front of me. I'm old enough to know. <laughs> do that all the time. <laughs> Curly, those are two different colleges. Oh, oh. It's the University of Southern California that wants you to appear at their rally. I think you ought to show up. You'll get a lot of publicity. Yeah, but I ain't getting no money. Oh, Phil, don't be so mercenary. After all, what's money? Money, my dear, is the stuff that your side of the mattress is so loaded with that when we go to bed, I'm sleeping three decks below you. <laughs> Is her side really that high, Curly? One night she fell off and broke three of my ribs. <laughs> no, the other side, I sleep on my right. You're not supposed to sleep on Will your you left please side. Stop I'm over it. on Now, stop. Look, Phil, I'm serious about tonight. I think you ought to show up. Yeah, it'll be a nice gesture for those college kids. Besides, they're sending a student committee over to see you this afternoon. Look, Remley, I don't care who they're sending over. I ain't appearing at no rally for free, and I'm not going, and nobody's going to make me. Hey, that may be the committee. I certainly hope it is. I'll tell them off. Remley, you better take Alice in the other room. There might be bloodshed. They got a lot of nerve asking me to come down here Trying to get me to go to a rally And not even offering me a cent You guys are wasting your time I ain't going Hello, Curly We're from Southern California and... Oh, my, but you're big, strong, attractive Don't try nothing, lady I'm a hundred years old <laughs> What's the matter with you? I ain't working for nothing And ain't nobody oh, gonna... Oh, Laurie, isn't he adorable? Oh, yes, and so handsome. And there'll be 200 beautiful girls at the rally, and they'll all be fighting to I dance with him. I don't care if there's gonna... <laughs> 200 beautiful girls? At least 200. What do you say, Curly? Wait, I'll get my ride, you tall, and go with you. <laughs> 
knew you wouldn't disappoint us, you lovely man. Hey, Curly, was that the committee who, 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 who? <laughs> who is this? It's a red-eyed owl that just flew in. <laughs> You're measuring for the mantelpiece. We're going to have him stuffed. Uh, my name is Frankie Remley, girls. You mean you're the Frankie Remley? Famous guitar virtuoso, star of the RCA Victor radio program, and discoverer of such great personalities as Phil Harris, Alice Faye, and Bing Crosby? <laughs> Wherever did you get that impression of me? That's what your card said, the one you left with the dean. Francis. Uh, Curly. <laughs> She must be thinking of another Frankie Romley. I wouldn't have a card printed like that. Oh, but you did. I have it right here with me. Let me see that. Curly, I'll give you my word. Wyatt. <laughs> Let me read this. Oh. Discover of Phil Harris, Alice Faye, and Bing Crosby, also founder of the North Pole. <laughs> Head brain surgeon at the Mayo Clinic and co-designer of the non-skid rubber mat. <laughs> Well, if you read that much, you might as well finish it. Well, that's all there is. That's all? Why, that crooked printer, he left out chief of counter-espionage for his majesty the czar. <laughs> Heads shall roll for this, the salt mine. Quiet, Rancid. <laughs> Look, kids, I'll be glad to appear for you tonight. Uh, by the way, uh, who's sponsoring this rally? The girls of Ada Sigma Pi. Oh, good, good. Great audiences, them Greek waitresses. <laughs> you know, they're a nice bunch of girls. They like me, too, you see, because I'm a big tipper, and I've never pinched a waitress while she's carrying a tray. I wouldn't think <laughs> of it. You know, I've always uh, been... Sure. Uh, Mr. Harris, Ada Sigma Pi is a sorority. Oh, oh, Ada. Oh, certainly. Yeah. You see, it's been so long since I've been to college, I've forgotten about the one I belong to. <laughs> You belong to a sorority? Mr. Harris, are you sure you went to college? Oh, yeah, yeah. The fact is, Frank and I uh, here were... We were uh, classmates, uh, weren't we, Frankie? If you say so. <laughs> well, uh, what was the name of the college? Oh, the name? Well, it... it um, uh, what was the name of that joint, anyway, Runley? <laughs> Heidelberg. That's it, Heidelberg. <laughs> What'd attend college. Say, huh? Oh, at Heidelberg. That's where, he, that's where we went. Well, why did you go to Germany to attend college? We like warm beer. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well have missed it anyway. It didn't mean a thing, did it? We like <laughs> warm beer. Oh, Heidelberg has always sounded so romantic. Tell me, Mr. Harris, is it as romantic as they say? Ah, do live a For romance, this is the play. <laughs> We was also on the football team. <laughs> I was the head. You back. tell them, Weber. I'm trying to feel. Shut up. <laughs> oh, it really must have been exciting, Curly. I could see that you did a lot of dueling when you were there. Dueling? What makes you say that? Well, your face is full of saber scars. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, those are German scars. Better known as American wrinkles. <laughs> I don't think that's funny, Mr. Remley. Curly doesn't have wrinkles. Thank you, dear. I only hope when my daddy reaches your age, he looks half as good. <laughs> Just for that, lady, I hope UCLA scores eight touchdowns against your school in the first quarter. Oh, oh I know you don't really mean that, Mr. Harris. Well, we have to run along now. Margie and I will pick you up at 7 o'clock and take you over to the rally. Okay, girls, thank you. We'll see you at 7. Goodbye. Goodbye, Curly. <laughs> Hey, Ram. Mm -hmm. Aren't they cute children? <laughs> yeah, adorable Todd. <laughs> you know, Frankie, I'm only going tonight because I always get a big kick out of watching these youngsters enjoy themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. The fact that they happen to be pretty girls has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Heavens, no! <laughs> well, Curly, now that you've decided to go, what excuse are you going to give Alice for changing your mind? I don't have to make any excuses. I'll just tell her the truth. Come on, let's tell her. Yeah. Oh, Alice! What is it, Phil? Oh, there you are. Look, um, honey, um, I've, I've been thinking about that rally tonight. So have I. I've... 
I've changed my mind about it. So have I. I seen the light and I'm gone. I seen the girls and you ain't. <laughs> Oh, so you saw him, huh? That's right, I saw him <laughs> Hey, look, Alice I'm not going just because There's going to be pretty girls there What's the matter? Don't you trust me, honey? Oh, of course I do, darling If you want to go, you can go Well, I trust you implicitly I know you won't look at any of those girls Because I'm going to be there with you To see that you don't <laughs> Oh, that's right You're, you're going to be there, too <laughs> Oh, well, we'll have fun anyway <laughs> All they want from you is entertainment. Hey, entertainment. Hey, I gotta do. Hey, Ren, hey, Ren. Hmm? What do you think I ought to do when I get there? Anything. Juggle, do card tricks, dance and play the spoons at the same time. I'm not a dancer, I'm a singer. All right, sing and play the spoons at the same time. <laughs> Look, I'm just gonna sing, and incidentally, it's my new RCA Victor record, and I better rehearse it right now. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> Called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right A rambling and a gambling man I'm free every night I eat a photo I stay, stay three times a day for my board More than any gal in this whole town can afford I got a big electric fan to keep me cool when I sleep My mattress stuffed with dollar bills to tickle my feet My motto is love them and leave them and break them and leave them and break them in right I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right. My house was bought with pawn shop tickets, red, white, and blue. My clothes are made of tiger skins right out of the zoo. I got a lot of money in the bank, I made it myself. The hearts of all my girlfriends lying right on my shelf. The girls all stop and whistle every time I go by. But I'm pretty darn particular, I'm telling no lie. I'm in there wheeling and dealing and really appealing and high as a kite. Come on, let's fly together, cause I'm rugged but right. To tell you that I'm rugged but fat You caused me plenty worry Put some gray in my hair You got the lips that sunk the ships Of England, France, and Peru But I am like Napoleon Cause you're my Waterloo I'd like a 15-minute intermission In you Ford V8 I'd love to make it longer But I got a late date My morals have always been gone with the wind So let's breeze it tonight I just called up to tell you That I'm rugged but right Don't overdo it Cause I really overdoed it last night That was very nice, Curly. Hey, yes. Mm -hmm. But at the rally, don't sing so loud, you'll drown out the spoons. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear him at all. Oh, Phil. Phil, do you think you ought to do that song tonight? Why not? Honey, when them college girls hear me do that, they'll be drooling all over them chrysanthemums. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll curl their little bobby socks. I'll have them oh, twisted and twirling. Listen to this redskin rave. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't stand any more of this. I'm going upstairs. And, Phil, with all those young college boys around, the girls aren't even going to look at a couple of, couple of old men like you and Frankie. <laughs> Curly, I don't like your wife's causticity. It doesn't befit her. <laughs> well, she just had it made, and it looks a little bulky under there. <laughs> You'll wear down. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. You know something, Remley? I'm just thinking, you know that Alice is right? Hmm? Well, listen to me. Compared to those college kids, we're gonna... We are. We're gonna, we're gonna look a little old. 
We don't have to. <laughs> we don't. What do you mean? When we go to the rally tonight, let's act like college kids. Let's dress and talk the way they do. Yeah, it sounds very good. It's great. But how do college kids dress and talk? Don't you remember? Our band used to play a lot of college dances. That was 25 years ago. <laughs> so what? College kids are college kids. They don't change. change the they don't change the talking, huh? Nah. Hey. hey, then I got a great idea. What's that? You know something? I still have our old band outfits in the trunk upstairs. We can dress up in the... Well, what are we waiting for? Well, let's go get them, and away we go. <laughs> almost seven o'clock. What's taking you fellas so long to get We're all ready, dressed? honey. We're all ready. Coming right down. Hey, Renly. Yeah. Hey, let's show Alice what the well-dressed college man looks like. Right. Collegiate. 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 Yes, we are collegiate. Nothing intermediate. We're collegiate. Ra, ra, ra. Oh, Rasmata. <laughs> oh, you fellas are kidding. What are you made up for? What on earth are you wearing? Kidding? What's kidding? These are college clothes. Oh, no. Certainly, we got the striped blazers, bell-bottom trousers, jazz bow ties, and the pork pie hats with the turned-up brim. <laughs> Not to mention our raccoon coats, two muted ukuleles, and a set of canoe cushions. <laughs> any place with you looking like that. Well, what's the matter with the way I look? This is my flaming youth outfit. Oh, that's a novelty. The flaming youth outfit on a pile of old ashes. Take <laughs> <laughs> off those ridiculous raccoon coats. We will not. Who ever heard of a college boy without a raccoon coat? You... Oh, Remley. Mm. Hey, that must be the girls now. Now, look. Let's Charleston to the door and let them in, right? Right. <laughs> Charleston, Charleston. Miss Fay, call off your dogs. <laughs> Either one of these shaggy mutts bites me, I'll sue you. All right, wait a minute. <laughs> We're not dogs. It's me and Mr. Remley. How did you get so hairy? <laughs> it's not hair, it's raccoon fur. Oh, when did that start glowing on you? <laughs> Don't be a wise guy. We're dressed like this for a reason. We've been asked to appear at SC. Well, it's about time the Sanitation Commission got after you. <laughs> Look, grocery boy, we're talking about the University of Southern California. Now beat it, will you? Because we want to hey, get... Hey, Curly, that must be our yeah, date. That, that's yeah, that's him, yeah. Uh, Julius, hey, get lost. We don't want the girls to see you. What girls? A couple of sorority girls are coming over to take us to the college. You mean they're going to be seen in public with you two? Of course. These initiations is getting tougher every year. <laughs> <laughs> the gruesome things they make them poor girls do just... Will you be quiet, Julius? Hey, Remley. Yeah. Now open the door and remember, if we want to make an impression on these college girls, we got to act the part. Okay. Hello, Curly. Strut on in, Sheba. Your chic is waiting for you. <laughs> Don't stand there, flappers. Black bottom over to your cake eaters. Well, ain't they jazzy tonight? <laughs> Mr. Harris, well, what are those ridiculous outfits you and Mr. Remley are wearing? Campus togs, baby, campus togs. Ain't they the cat's pajamas? Cat's pajamas? Yeah, 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 that's college talk. Hey, lay a little of that talk on them, Remley. <laughs> Okie dokie, hot diggity dog, and so's your old man. <laughs> you mentioned 23 skidoo, OU kid, and ta ra ra boom de -a. <laughs> Curly, you're going back a little too far. <laughs> oh, fellas, surely you don't expect us to go out with you dressed like this. There's nothing wrong with the way you're dressed. Come on, let's get started. Yeah, we better hurry. On the way over, I want to stop at my bootlegger. Ramley, please. I want to order some boots. Oh, boots. <laughs> We won't be able to take you. You see, um, we don't have room in our car. Don't let it worry your pretty little head. I got a big Cadillac. Oh, that ain't collegiate, fellas. You should have a hot rod. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, gee whiz, we gotta have a hot rod, but we ain't got one. Well, then, uh, I'll 
take care of that for you, Mr. Harris. Can you wait 15 minutes? Yeah, we got to wait for Alice to finish dressing anyway. Now hurry it up, will you, Julius? Hey, in the meantime, we'll entertain the girls. You ready, Remley? Yeah. One, two. You got to be a football hero ah, to get, get along with a wild girl. girl. And every Coed has lips of red for Harvard. A Betty Coed has eyes of blue for you. Please, please, Phyllis, stop already, please. Yes, yes, it's getting awfully late. Mr. Harris, why don't you and Mr. Remley wait for the hot rod? And Miss Faye will go ahead with us in our car. No, 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 no. Now, we got to do this right. Look, we'll all go in a hot rod as soon as Julius gets here. Hey, in the meantime, I'll keep you flappers amused with another funny story. Oh, I please, gotta... Phil. You've told us every Peaches Browning joke there is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You see, honey, this one's about Gertrude Ederly. It seems that this dame was putting the grease on, getting ready to swim that channel. Hey, wait a minute. I'll tell it to you later. Hold it. That must be Julie's. Come on in, kids. Let's go out and pile on that hot rod. Come on, let's go. Well, you all set, Mr. Harris. I got your hot rod. Good boy, Julius. Where is it? Right here at the crib. How do you like it? How'd it get hurt? <laughs> <laughs> what a broken dog. Da- Julius, that's my new Cadillac. Looks good with the fenders off, don't it? <laughs> I also took off the hood and removed the muffler. Well, what did you do that for? How else can you make a hot rod? Looks sporty, don't it? Julius, you've got the top down. What's wrong with that? It's a sedan. <laughs> I know. It wasn't easy getting the top off. I had to do it with this can open. Oh, no. You little so-and-so, look what you did. You ruined it completely. Don't get excited. I'll buy you a new can opener. I had to break your... <laughs> That's the appreciation I get after fixing your car up nice and, and painting that snappy slogan on it. What snappy slogan? Climb Peaches, here's your can. Oh. <laughs> that does it. We are not going with those two characters. I don't blame you. I wouldn't be found dead with those two corn balls. <laughs> Come on, girls. We'll go to the rally alone. Goodbye, Phil. See you in the morning. But Alice, wait a minute. I'm not... Alice. Remley. They don't want us. How do you like that? We get all dressed up for the occasion and no place to go. We're just going to have to... All right, take it stand. easy. Take it easy, Frank. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, you still got them canoe cushions? Yeah. Well, then, come on. I'll take you for a paddle in MacArthur Park. <laughs> How cozy. But wait, I got a better idea. What? Let's go back in your house and make a batch of bathtub gin. Jumping Jupiters, what a peachy idea. Ooh, wee. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Now you can enjoy the music you want when you want it. Now you can enjoy it at its best. With RCA Victor's modern system of recorded music, the 45. The moment you listen to RCA Victor's 45 system of recorded music, you'll recognize in a flash the beauty of lifelike clarity and unblemished overtones. And you'll agree the 45 system sounds better. It plays easier, too. Take RCA Victor's new Victrola 45 personal phonograph, for example. It's versatile and practical. It's neat and compact. Why, the Victrola 45 personal phonograph even has a convenient carrying handle. And if you buy the Victrola 45 personal phonograph now, if you buy any RCA Victor instrument that plays 45s exclusively, you'll receive at no extra cost over $6 worth of record albums. So take advantage of this terrific bonus offer brought to you by RCA Victor, cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations. You were a wonderful audience, folks. We're a little late. Thank you, and good night, everybody. This program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips, included in today's cast were Barbara Eiler and Gloria Grant. Remember, whether you're buying a television set, a radio, a Victrola phonograph, or records, put your faith in the cornerstone of American home entertainment for three generations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in television. Next, the Theater Guild stars Claudette Colbert and Gregory Ratoff on NBC.